all these experiments, all these it's circuits that are in here. Transistor. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put a circuit in this book unless it was tested and it worked. If it didn't work, I didn't put it in there. Nice. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to need some bulletproof circuits here because I. I'm getting a coil. We're going to find out real quick how these things work. That's a good philosophy. I'm excited yeah. to see your coil. Well, I'm going to build two, so I'm going to find out. And I have an idea for one. Ooh. Yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to make part of it a control coil. So Who we got going on here? Nice. How do I how do I this present is... him? Solo oh, layout. that's my battery. There you go. Yeah. There we go. That's my battery. Very so nice. it's, uh, next week it will be one month. Oh, so, oh wrong one. yeah, wrong one. Oh, dang it. My Come bad. on, man. <laughs> we had it. There we there go. We there you go. Two of us clicking at once was the problem. <laughs> it's okay. We got it. So it's four cells. Uh, next week will be one month that it's been running. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of material science, especially with magnesium. And the key to a lot of these cells to make them last is how to uh, stop the oxidation that goes on on the plate uh, magnesium. So there's several techniques that I'm working on right now to look very promising. So if that works, uh, I could have this thing running well over a year. So wow, how long you said it was? It's been running a month. It'll be a month next week. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> like right now, these plates are on the inside; they're completely oxidated, and as you can see, it's still producing power. Mm -hmm. So Is that the blackness, what, black. What's that? Uh, black. No, the, actually, it, it's a hazy kind of like a hazy white that forms on the magnesium on the tips so even after it being oxidized it's still producing power so what's going on inside is very important why this thing is technically this battery should not be producing any power anymore but it is and the question hmm. is why so there's a lot of science quantum tunneling casimir effect all that's you know definitely possible. Now's the yeah, now's the interesting part, Mike. You you built a device and now you gotta figure out how it's doing and what it's doing. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's uh, not galvanic, you know, right? It's not because if I put I my hand if I put my hand on the cell and put a meter up mm -hmm. to it, the voltage increases. So I have a thermal yeah. electric conversion happening as well. That doesn't oh, sound that's galvanic cool. at all. Right, that's so cool. So, so, if it's not galvanic, how is it oxidizing? <laughs> well, that's a big question. Yeah, <laughs> there must be that's something the... on there that's very small amount of galvanizing properties are going on there somewhere. Yeah, the so surface. what I'm ultimately what I'm working on now is how to preserve the magnesium and still put out an ionic charge. If I succeed with that, these technically these cells should last for years hmm. so there's two um two processes that i'm working on right now that are looking very promising i don't want to make any claims just yet until i actually have it in operation but yeah like if it goes six months and it's still putting out full power i'm definitely on the right track you need to do one in a, in a yeah. vacuum seal because maybe there's well that's in the air or something you know right so eventually these cells are going to be hermetically sealed they're actually going to be like super glued together so if you try to open it you'll basically destroy the cell hmm. so because if it's completely sealed, it's not getting exposed to oxygen or nitrogen right. or any of the elements that could have a detrimental effect on what's going on inside. So if you can seal it up and mm -hmm. close it in from all the elements, this thing no should run for years. Right. Wow. So we've kind of outruled uh, galvanic action. 
when we found out, if you put, you know, just your hand on it, the power actually starts to increase. So that shows a thermoelectric conversion. Right. Mm -hmm. That is right. not galvanic. When you have a response like that, you know this because the galvanic it, response would interfere with a thermal reception like that. Exactly. It'll actually go down. It's not. You wouldn't be able to get be thermal out. reception when you have a galvanic <laughs> uh, bacteria. That's right. That's exactly it. If anything, it would make it worse, but it actually enhances it. The, the so, actual galvanic reaction has its own heat. That's what I mean. That's right. That's right. So there's a couple elements in there that um, are kind of the the magic, what goes on inside. So I've been uh, like I've basically done like chemistry 101. <laughs> you know, in the last couple of months, it's just nothing but reading and reading and reading lab notes and research notes and uh, what other companies are working on, what they're using for their dielectric and. Uh, solid state and electrolytes and just pretty much the entire spectrum I'm looking into. So, yeah, it's really, really interesting stuff. That's why I've really embraced this because I see such huge potential with this. So I don't look at this like a battery. It's not a battery. It's actually a solid state generator. Yeah, generator. Right. Yeah, that's a zero point energy generator right there. That's great work. I love it. I think you're really onto something. So right now I've got uh I'm working on plates. They're 12 inch by 12 inch. My new cells are gonna be huge. I have enough material right now to make six cells. Each cell should be putting over one amp. So if you got six, that's six amps at 1.6 wow. volts each. Put them in series. Do the math. Yeah, each that's cell a is one amp at yeah. six volts. No, each cell puts out one amp each. So if you got six cells, that's six amps, and then 1.6 to 1.7 volts each times that by six. Well, the amps doesn't go up. The amp stays one amp. You have to go in um, in parallel to do that, not series. If you want the amps well, to go up, you have to be in parallel. Yeah, but so either way, yeah, you either way, have your amp stay one amp at at six at seven volts, so seven watts. Yeah, yeah, which is not too shabby. You know That's what? The way That's I look at it, ten watts for free. You could charge anything with that for free. Exactly. So ultimately, the goal is to hook up, uh, say, four car batteries to a four kilowatt inverter. And then use these batteries or you know cells like this to charge those batteries continuously so but you could also you know, go in parallel too and get your amp you could go any way you want with these see with the uh, with the hutchison crystal cell parallel you can't answers. go in series you can't oh. go in series with the uh, crystal cells these things you can you i mean can mike the voltage. have you tried using a boost converter with that well you would need diodes oh, oh yeah this. yeah yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> now, it's kind of weird, too. I did hook this up to the scope at one point, and I was getting a back EMF, which I found hmm. kind of really interesting. Hmm. That there is was a kickback, and there's no coil in it. You mean I wonder, what it would do, I wonder what it would do with a boost converter? That's it. It, probably, that's it would work. Or well, even like that kickback with a load or without a load? Was it dead short? Well, I could do a dead short. Uh, it was, would was hold. Was that kickback during the dead short, or was it with a light or a load or something? Uh, usually with a light or a load, yeah. I would get a back EMF in it. But what's really interesting is there's no coil in it. Right, right. No coil. But, yeah, so the why, light, so light, light has a little is, coil in it, you know? Well. Yeah, but this is different, though. Yeah, this well, is Well, everything, everything flies back, all materials. It doesn't have to be a coil. It, hmm. You charge anything in one polarity, you remove that charge, even if it's a flat plate, it's going to reverse charge on you. Yeah, but there has right to be something, there, there has to be some sort of an inductor there in order to create yeah. anything that's that. polarizable. You remove your polarity from it, it reverses polarity. It doesn't have to be a coil. Well, you might be right on that. 
because no, I, I I recently I don't know where I read saw this or read it, but I, I picked it up somewhere. That's that's actually really cool to know that because uh, I don't tend to repeat yeah, stuff that I don't you know mark down as you know affirmative. See, mm. like if you see if you put these uh, cells under a load, you can draw the power right down to like maybe a half a volt. But the thing is, this light here is 12 volts and you need 300 milliamps to run it, okay? So if the cell's totally pulled down, it's totally exhausted, why is it still working? Hmm. Right? Why is it still working? It should be dead. It could be breathing the moisture in the air or something. Well, if the, pla if the uh, magnesium plates on the inside are completely oxidized, this cell should be dead. Well, no, the oxidization will actually be part of the galvanic activity. Because since the entire surface of the plate is oxidized, usually you lose it. Like, most of the potential is gone. I mean, but isn't that the breakdown of the material, the oxidation? Yeah, yeah. It, it it's the same thing as galvanizing down. copper and iron. They break it. They, 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 they oxid yeah, the oxidation, it's just corrosion, right? Right. But road it's still putting out power. It's putting enough power out to run a 300 milliamp light. Well, oxygen is highly corrosive, Mike. You got to vacuum seal that because it's yeah, it, oxygen yeah, flies away. I mean, it, it corrodes just about anything. Yeah. So Even that's why I really been... zinc maybe zinc is not so easily. Well, oxygen. see, a lot of magnesium. If you were to shop for it, the you can get magnesium that has a mix, say, like with zinc in it or aluminum, like an alloy, more of an alloy. That will extend the life of the magnesium. Mm -hmm. So I try to go for the purest magnesium I can get. And now the, the trick is, is to make that magnesium last. So there's a couple of techniques I'm working on right now that look very promising. So you know who holds that secret? That the ancient samurai builders of those swords, they know how to do that with magnesium and carbon and stuff. They mix carbon, some, like somehow they purify the they carbon. Said, well, they, well, what they do is they dope it. It's like uh, uh, putting a film on it. So I'm coming up with a special film that go over the magnesium and that will retard or almost completely stop the, the corrosion process. But... The other problem is you got to still make the magnesium reactive. So it has to be able to still transfer, you know, the ions through that medium. So that's what I've been working on. That's kind of like the $6 million question is how to do it. So there's a couple that I'm working on that look very promising. So hopefully when I built the big cell, I'm going to actually use one of those ideas to preserve it and we'll see what happens i mean from what i understand about biology and you know not to get into the medical topics and stuff but magnesium is it was very uh potent for uh energy production 